Hello! This video is going to be a brief overview of how I created this Jayla makeup. If you want to know more in depth about what I did, why I did it, and how to recreate this yourself, I will be putting out four videos which go more in depth into the sculpting, the molding, the casting, and the application of this piece. Now, if you do not know who Jayla is, she is a new alien from the Star Trek Beyond feature film. So for that movie, for the original Jayla makeup, Joel Harlow was the prosthetic makeup designer. Richie Alonso sculpted and applied the makeup from a Neville Page design and Khan Trance tied the wig. So the movie had a really talented crew of people working on it, which is why all the alien designs end up looking so freaking cool and why I really wanted to recreate this Jayla makeup. But little did I know this was actually going to be one of the hardest makeups I have ever tried to create. For this, I'm just going to keep it all happy, show you what did work, what I eventually did for the final makeup, and I'll go into detail about all the ways in which this makeup challenged me in the longer videos. Now let's jump right into it. So the first step is sculpting, but as you will notice, I am sculpting on a full head cast of myself. It has also been mounted to an MDF board and it has been coated with acrylic paint to make it the same color as the clay and a dental separator. The clay I am using is Chavant NSP Medium, which is the industry standard. And I start by roughing out the general shape and then using tools to smooth it out and then add a little bit of pore texture back in. The actress who plays Jayla has wider nostrils than me, so I did widen the nostrils on my sculpt as well as make a fuller upper lip, whereas the original sculpt for the movie didn't go over the nostrils or the lips. Also different to the original sculpt, I sculpted the black lines as a flat mold. When I first started doing this makeup, the only information that I could find online were that the black lines were silicon, but I couldn't quite work out how they were done, so I did them as a flat mold. But now that more photographs and stories of how it's done have come out in magazines like the Makeup Artist magazine and Prosthetic magazine, I can see that they actually included the black lines in the original sculpt, and then I'm assuming when they fill the molds, they will just paint in the black lines by hand, wait for that silicon to cure and then pour the rest of the pale flesh tone silicon on top which is really smart because then the black lines will register in the exact same place every single time for continuity so for continuity the makeup will always be the same but i didn't know this at the time so my black lines are coming after the original sculpt so this is where it's going to get a little bit confusing because i'm going to try and be brief basically i needed to make an altered positive core for my mold which means flaring out the edges which is called a flange and adding some keys and some pry points so i do this by adding clay to my live cast and then making this into a negative mold by using silicon and ultra cal 30 as the shell for this negative mold and once that is done i can fill that with a really rigid polyurethane resin so like a really hard plastic which also has an aluminium filler in there and then I back that with Ultra Cal 30 stone so that it becomes a little bit of a <laughs> cheaper mold because the resin is quite expensive whereas the stone is quite cheap and pretty easy to work with. Then I end up with a really firm version of what I sculpted in that water-based clay. Now in order to transfer my sculpt from my plaster head onto this altered core, you have to soak it in water for 24 hours and that dental separator that I put on underneath the clay will break down and then I can gently pry the clay off my life cast. I then place that clay onto the positive side of my mold and I have to fix up the edges and put a little bit of finishing textures back in. Next I have to add flashing all the way around the mold so this gives the silicon a place to leak out when I put the mold together. And then to make the other half of my mold for this I'm coating this in another layer of that rigid polyurethane plastic or actually three layers of that plastic. And then I put a little bit of burlap in to help the stone bond and then I back that with the Ultra Cal 30 stone as well. This results in a really good mold because we've got the flanges to clamp it together, we've got pry points and keys to open it and close it pretty easily, and the resin and the stone are really strong materials. Once that is open, I need to clean out the clay. Then I put a release onto both halves of the mold and I start spraying my Super Baldi's cap plastic into it. So I kept my clay that I cleaned out of my mold so I get an idea of the volume of silicon that I will need to fill this. I start with my deadener and I mix in some flesh tones, some white, and some blue, red, and green flocking. Then I mix in my Plaster Gel 10 A and B parts. I think this was about 180% deadener. And I pour that into the negative half of my mold. I swirl it around and then I put the positive half into my mold. And then to get really tight edges with no silicon so it's easily blended out, I put three clamps around the outside of that flange. 
Once that has cured, I open up the mold and where I could have improved this mold, I should have really put a handle in the back of it as trying to open it with screwdrivers did cause my mold to crack eventually. But I did try and open it as gently as I could with screwdrivers and then I'm getting baby powder in there to help it, to help it come out of the mold without it rolling over and sticking to itself too badly. Now I did do a separate mold for the lips as it will be easier to apply it that way and then if I ever need an upper lip for other characters, I could just reuse this one. So I've got it on my little lip positive, which is also made out of that rigid polyurethane like plastic resin. And that one's also got the flashing around the edge for the silicon to pour over it into. And then to make the other half of this mold, I've put walls around it and I'm pouring in my rigid polyurethane plastic. And I open that up and I have to clean the clay out of that as well. And then I've got a little bit of alcohol in a brush just to get off the residue. Now I've put a release on these and I'm spraying them with cat plastic as well. And then once I've got enough layers of cat plastic, in goes the silicon. This has the same coloring and deadener as the full face one. But this mold only needs the one clamp right in the middle. And opening this up gently and I'll also use powder to help take it out of the mold and stop it from sticking. Now to make my flat mold for the black stripes, I built up a clay wall around the sculpture and then poured in some pinky seal silicon. And once that was cured, I cleaned it off with alcohol and then put a release down and then I'm spraying cat plastic over that as well. This is also super baldies. And once I had enough cat plastic layers down, I'm mixing up my silicone. So here you can see my black pigment actually burst open into the cup. So it ended up being a very, very black color, but it worked out well because these pieces are so thin that you need quite an opaque silicone mixture for it to stay black. So I pour out this very black silicone mixture over the flat mold and I used my giant scrapey knife to try and get it as thin as possible. But I found that if I scraped too hard, I took away too much of the black silicone. So I ended up having to cotton tip around each of these lines. Once that silicone had cured, I put one more layer of cat plastic on the back of it. And then once the cat plastic was dry, I powdered and removed it from the mold. Initially, I did try and put this on my head after I'd already put on the face appliance and it was very hard to work out what I was doing. So I decided to blend this out onto the forehead piece before applying it. So I lined it up where it needed to be and I worked out it was kind of distorting a little bit because it's flat going onto a curved space. So I cut off the two outer stripes and then I started with the middle one gluing it down and making sure the placement was correct. After it's all glued down, I'm blending out those edges with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton tip. And then that forehead appliance was ready to be applied. So I got my friend Alistair to apply the ball cap on me as applying a ball cap on yourself is actually very hard to do. So he pinned my hair up to sit nicely under the ball cap and he's using gaff cord around the edges to help all of my hair stay under the ball cap while we apply it. We put on the ball cap. This is a plastic ball cap that dissolves with acetone. So we glued it down using prosate adhesive and then blended out the edges with acetone. Now to apply the forehead piece, I ended up putting it on my head just to make sure I get the placement right and then rolled back little sections at a time to put the glue underneath, let the glue dry, just to make sure it was applied in the correct place. And I have my friend Kate helping me now. So we blended out the cap plastic edges using isopropyl alcohol. And then around the edges that needed a little bit more attention, we put some creamy prosade, which is what Kate is putting around my eyes now. Next, I glued down my lip appliance using prosade adhesive and again, blending out the edges with isopropyl alcohol. And then I did the cheek appliances and I sealed them with a little bit of prosate adhesive and a matte sealer by Bluebird. And I used a pale cream foundation over the rest of my face to make it match the color of their prosthetics. And then Kate airbrushed some white Bluebird ink over my face, my ears, and my neck. It's important to note that Jayla isn't completely clown white as this will really help you with your paint job and make it a lot easier to achieve. So in keeping with that, she has a lot of speckling of natural colors. So we spattered over some light flesh tones, some pinks, some blues, and some grays. Once that base color was painted on, we had to remove all of the overspill onto the black prosthetics. So I did that with a little bit of alcohol on a cotton tip. And then moving on to the makeup around the eyes, I put down a brown eyeshadow and then an almost black, super dark brown eyeshadow. Next, I put a black eyeliner pencil on my upper and lower waterline and some black mascara on my top and bottom lashes. Now to connect the rest of the black lines to my eye area, I'm using a felt tip black eyeliner. This is Kat Von D's Trooper and trying to copy the shape and the thickness of Jayla's lines. Next, I wanted to make the black lines a little bit blacker as that white paint didn't fully come off them. So I'm going over these lines with some black alcohol paint just to sharpen them up a little bit more. Next, I put some nude lipstick over the top fake lip and my bottom real lip. 
Now for areas that I couldn't reach or see very well, like the back of my head, David came along and helped me with those black lines. I also got David's help with applying the wig so he could hold it down while I put the glue over the front of the lace. So this is using a matte spirit gum and you can see I went a little bit too ham with the spirit gum and it left a yellow residue over the lace and over the hair so I had to clean that up a little bit with alcohol and the cotton tip and then also some of the light flesh tone alcohol paint over that lace to make it match. Now obviously I was wearing a different set of contact lenses through most of this application but I decided at the end that I liked this pair of lenses better. So this is the finished look. And then of course I had to take a million selfies and post them to Snapchat before removing this makeup. Thanks for watching, hopefully this wasn't too jargon filled and confusing. If you want to see why I used what I used and why I did what I did, I will go into lots more detail in the individual videos going over sculpting, molding, casting and application. And I'll go into detail about all the problems that I faced trying to make this makeup and how I ended up fixing them and see that everybody runs into problems while doing effects makeup and that there's multiple ways to go at it and try and fix them. These in-depth tutorials will be up sporadically over the next couple of months of the Halloween season. I will probably put other videos in between so that's not all Jayla Central. If you want to be notified when those videos go live, you can subscribe to my channel here and I will see you guys soon.